Hey there, my name is Kyle Walden. Welcome to another episode of High Desert Heathenry. Today, I'm out here by uh, Shackler Reservoir, out here in some uh, just some bushes, some tamarack bushes. Uh, just kind of up on a hill, and typically the area surrounding this is underwater when the reservoir is full, but right now it's not. So, what I'm doing is I'm just putting out a couple rabbit snares. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you one of them. And I might show you a couple others, but I don't wanna waste too much time trying to film when I should be setting snares. So I'll show you, you know, two, maybe three, just to give you an idea of what it looks like out here and what I'm dealing with personally as I'm getting poked and jabbed by all these branches. So let's do that. All right, you can see, got my wire. What I'm using for a little multi-tool is this Gerber splice. It's just a pair of scissors with some other tools, but it helps me to snip this wire. This is 20 gauge galvanized steel wire. Got my good old hat and my Henry 22 tripods in the bag. So let's come over here. You can see there's little dens and stuff. I was thinking about putting one in here, but that's literally like a dead end hole. I just think it's a little hidey hole. I could put one there, but right there, if you can see, I got my sticks and everything set up and you can see the loop of the snare. So I've gone around the side. I put some other sticks up that way. It's like a funnel that they can go through. Um, we're going to give that a shot and uh, see how it goes. I really want to be careful out here because we've been seeing a lot of uh, mountain lion tracks. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't get mauled or anything because I mean, it's getting cold, so they're coming down from the mountains, coming down to where the food and the water is. And uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm safe out here. I've, I've got more than a 22 with me, of course, as always. But uh, yeah, let's just keep going. As you can see, it's a little bit windy out here, but this thicket here is a prime place to find all sorts of critters, whether you're hunting with a shotgun or whether you're out here setting snares or other traps. I have seen a lot of coyote tracks, mountain lion tracks out here. So I don't know how many rabbits are going to be here uh, right now. But luckily I've been seeing more rabbit trails and more rabbit tracks in this area than I have pretty much in any other area out here. Look at what I found here. A cat skull. So they're out here. Whether this is a domestic cat, I think this likely is a domestic cat, but yeah, maybe not, who knows. When I'm talking about signs of life and activity out here, this is what I'm talking about. Now this trail, even though it's got the shadows and stuff, it actually comes up, wraps around back into the area I was just in, which is right over there on the other side of that, that bush, right there. So I've gone and backed away out of this thicket. I mean, it is thick. I don't even know if it's worth it to climb in there and set many snares just because it's almost impenetrable in certain areas. And uh, it's just kind of a pain for me to actually get in there. It's kind of a tough area because aside from the thickets, you can see it's just a big lake bed out here. Beautiful area, but... This is what it is. You see either someone's driving out there or the wind is just kicking up a ton of dust. All right, I found a spot for my second snare. It's actually right there. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. It's just a decent little hole that goes through. It's almost set up with branches that are kind of like a speed snare. Um, so then it actually wraps through around back that way. So it's kind of open back in there. What I'm going to do is I'll set the snare up there. I'll put sticks on each side. That way it's uh, like a funnel. And I'm going to do the same on the back side. Put a couple chin-up sticks. That way the rabbit's forced to go up and through the uh, noose. And then on this side here, I'm actually going to put some debris back in there to help block it off to keep them from just automatically running through that way. Um, so we'll see how it goes right there. Okay, like I was saying earlier, I've got some 20 gauge wire. You can pick this up at like pretty much any hardware store that sells fencing supplies, things of that nature. I'm sorry about the wind noise. It is just getting breezy out here. It's fall. If you live in Nevada around this area, you know it gets windier than heck out here. 
So going back to what I was saying with the wire, um, I'm gonna show you guys how I make snares. Is it the best way? Probably not, I'm pretty new at this. Uh, I just kind of watch the guys on YouTube, uh, namely the Wooded Beardsman. I uh, like his videos a lot. He's uh, super knowledgeable, super adventurous. Um, and he actually has some videos where he sets up uh, game cameras and you know you just watch what the rabbits do that way you can prove what he's doing and kind of combat their sneakiness because they are sneaky they always find the path of least resistance and sometimes they'll push your sticks and stuff out of the way just to avoid the uh the snare so Alright, I didn't bring any pliers with me. I've made a couple wraps around, so I just gotta be a little bit ghetto with it. I'm gonna use the tip of the scissors here and actually finish bending the wire around here so there's not a little point sticking out. Now, you wanna make sure that it slides loosely. Try to block the wind here. You wanna make sure that it slides loosely because if it doesn't, then it's just gonna bind up on itself, the rabbit's gonna hit it and just run out of it. So I've wound it loose that way and go through. The other thing is if you have kinks in the wire, it'll hit those like speed bumps and it'll stop it from doing anything. So I try to make sure that it's nice and round and as smooth as possible, especially the line immediately around it. That way it pulls tight easy. And when I say the, around it, I mean the line immediately around where I've twisted this up. The length of your snare also, that's entirely dependent on what you're attaching it to. Like uh, the Wooded Beersman was saying, he likes to have about a four, a four inch by like four and a half or five inch, you know, like ovular loop here. Um, that really depends on the size of the hair or the rabbit that you're gonna snare. So these are, what we're going for out here is cottontails. Um, I am gonna keep the pelts and tan those, but I also eat the rabbit itself. So, they're pretty small is what I'm getting at. So I'm gonna have a pretty darn small uh, snare, just enough for them to wanna be able to get through. And you can actually look at some of the trails around here and there are little holes and they make very, very small dwellings and they're able to get through pretty easily. So here we are. All right, so here we are, got it set up. I've got a couple little branches on the sides that are kind of barely supporting it so the wind doesn't knock it uh, away from where I have it set. And I've got actually a smaller row of like chin up sticks and sticks to block it. That way they're kind of forced to come through here. Um, there are actually a ton of escape paths all throughout here. You can kind of look through the, the trees, but it's at, it's gonna be so hard for me to get back in there without crawling through rabbit tunnels myself to get through that uh, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna go back there and block it off. All right. At this point, the wind is actually picking up a lot and it's starting to get really noisy. You're not gonna be able to hear me very well. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is for what you've seen for today. Um, and I will give you an update when I come back and check these over the next couple of days. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully I've got some rabbits in here. That'd be friggin' excellent. It'd be my first time getting them. Um, yeah, so from here, I'm just gonna drive on out into the desert a little bit, look for some more tracks. I'm actually gonna try to look for um, some coyote dens. I've got a couple traps um, I'm soaking right now, um, degreasing, that way I can get ready to dye them and wax them and uh, get those ready to put up by some coyote dens. And uh, we have uh, AR-15s that we like to use for coyotes as well, uh, just because the 223 is a pretty fast bullet. So. Uh, and it's open out here. You can see them. I have one buddy who likes to use uh, night vision and hunt them because uh, that's legal here in Nevada and they're varmint so you don't have to have a permit to shoot them or anything. You do have to have a permit in Nevada to trap anything and sell the furs so or you know place any traps in general um, and they all have to be tagged and just as much as you know any other state pretty much the same rules and regulations apply but uh yep. Just made it back to the van hanging out, eating some snacks, and uh, just got my 22 unloaded and put away in the back. 
It's illegal to drive with a loaded weapon. You can have them in the tube, but none in the actual chamber of the, the firearm when you're inside of a vehicle. You can have your handguns loaded that way because they're a defense weapon, but any long guns or anything that could be used for hunting, and that is a hunting law. You just cannot have one in the chamber while you're in a vehicle. But uh, is what it is. Ran into some guy out here. He just uh, drove off, just kicking it out here on his dirt bike. And he stopped by because he thought I was broke down out here. And I was like, yeah, my van is shanty, you know, but it ain't, uh, <laughs> it ain't that bad. You know, I'm not, I'm not stuck. And, uh, he was like, oh, I told him I was out here trapping. And he goes, are you going to run in? Am I going to run into your traps? And I say, no, nah, man, they're just little snares and they're up in the brush. And, uh, he just took off. He was a real nice guy. And it's cool that you run into people like that out here that are actually willing to stop and see if you're okay. You know, a lot of people are jerks, but out here in the desert, yeah, you run into both. You run into the, you run into some jerks, but you also run into nice people. M more often than not, they're nice people. Yeah, it's uh, overall a nice day aside from the wind. The sun is really warm, but um, that wind is just cold. It was actually making my nose run, so I threw my jacket on. But yeah, hope you guys are enjoying this uh this episode here, even though it's kind of kind of plain and simple. Um, I hope you find it somewhat informative and interesting. Just so you can see where I'm parked at here, here's the front of the van in this big open field. And that tall brush all back out in there is where I was just at. That's a pretty prime area. And it stays dry. You can see this has all just been like stomped on by cows out here. And this whole area surrounding pretty much that little hill is all underwater. You can see anywhere there's tall sagebrush, it's, it's pretty much dry and not submerged. But all this, this grass and stuff, it's usually, I'd probably say, uh, knee deep to waist deep water out here and it's just overflow from the reservoir that is actually back that way the road i came in on it leads right through here so i'm over here at justin's house got the cast iron i'm gonna put a tri-tip in there uh, just because we didn't snare anything obviously right away gotta wait a couple of days probably but i got some uh some paper product down in here this is a Swedish log that our friend uh, Justin Kelly had carved up for us. So I'm going to try to cook with the skillet directly on top of this Swedish log. And we'll see how that turns out. So the craziest thing just happened. This thing is on fire and it's burning really nicely. But I was going to tell you how I lit it. And it sure as heck was not with a big lighter. So Luke Skywalker came over and I just incinerated this log with his lightsaber. Amazing. Another cool feature about this is if you have a bunch of old lard or anything else that's in there from just cooking and leaving the old grease in your pan, put it on top of the Swedish log and it will absolutely incinerate everything and the fat will drip down into the cracks of the log and just help it burn. It's absolutely amazing. You can hear it sizzling. Sizzle, baby. Woo! Oh, it's dripping. You see it? Yummy. <laughs> Look at this thing. Beautiful. Almost doesn't fit. <laughs> That's good. That's what he said. <laughs> what season did you put on there? Uh, it's called the usual. The it's usual? A, yeah, it's a rub. Uh, oh, 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 oh. It smells amazing. Indeed it is. Rolling. Woo! What do we got going on here, Kyle? Well, this pan is hotter than heck. And I got smoke in my eyeballs. And I'm just trying to mitigate the amount of seasoning that I incinerate on this tri-tip. Because... <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty pretty freaking hot in here uh, the outside's gonna be black but the inside's gonna be mooing and you know what what do they call that a black and blue yeah right I don't even care the seasoning will still taste good oh yeah and i got more of it for whatever burns in the pan i do need to put more lard in here though i think Got the tripod over it. See if you want to stick it on the other way. 
bar we can edit things, right? Yeah. It's good enough for the girls I go out with. <laughs> Frying and pure fat. Make sure to take a picture of that side for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's just seasoning, right? That just yeah. comes right off. But I'm gonna leave it on there. That seasoning is really, it smells amazing. Yeah. Rosemary, garlic, paprika, salt, pepper, and uh, uh, a little bit of cayenne pepper, I think. Uh, I love these seed logs though, man. Yeah, they look amazing. They just look cool. They function cool. The entire premise of them is awesome. Yeah, so cool. Stick your finger in the grease and taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I will, don't tempt me. No one uh, who's watching has ever <laughs> stick your finger in hot, sizzling yeah. ass grease. You know that. I watched, uh, uh, I watched a video, though, of um, a guy who had a... Uh, what was it? I think he put his hand into, like, molten lead or something like that. Oh, no. Yeah, and what he did was he... Uh, no, it was fine, because what he did was he, uh, he held his hand in, like, this bowl of, like, ice water for like 30 seconds or whatnot He's and then pulled it out and then just like basically just jabbed into it just real quick and so because it cooled down his skin and his hand was moist yeah. it just basically created steam around his hand for the you know 0.2 of a second that his hand went into it and I was just like wow look at this this is turning out amazing besides the smoke in my eyeballs well, this is what we're using the usual all-purpose by Fire and Smoke Society. Pretty good stuff. It smells amazing. We haven't tried it yet, but we're about to here in a second. Alright, check it out, you heathens. Got it here. Tri-tip looks done. It might be a little dark looking, but the inside I'm sure is still rare. But I'm just gonna let it sit here off of the fire. Oh, see that? Yeah, that feels nice. So I'm gonna let it just sit here and cool off for a second, and then I will cut it open, and we'll see how well I did or how well I did not do. Ooh, oops, splashing stuff, but whatever. Looks all right. Here we go. Time to reveal. Freaking good. Super good. That rub is fantastic. Outstanding. Just so you can see another piece of this, look at that. One side's been slathered in the, the seasoned in lard and everything, but the inside of that turned out nice. Justin just headed on out. Uh, he's dropping off some of the kids that were hanging out with his daughter and whatnot. So I'm going to hang out for a little bit, let this uh, one log that's on there just kind of burn and uh, enjoy my uh, PBR here. Once my beer is done, I'll hang out, like I said, until the fire's done and then uh, be on my way. We'll see how the rest of the evening goes. Here we are. We're inside Justin's uh, tiny home. It is very tiny. It's basically uh, like a cinder block cabin with a wooden front and a door 
and uh, I helped him build this along with our uh, other friend uh, Justin Kelly and our buddy Brandon Anderson. We call him Five Dollar. We'll get to that later. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna split this, uh, split these uh, logs up, get some kindling in here. I took some of the uh, hot coals out of the fireplace over there or the outdoor pit, that way I can shovel them in here for him. Um, it's supposed to be, you know, well below freezing, probably down to like 15, 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, just split some kindling up real quick and uh, toss it in there and kind of stoke this up for him. What's really cool is he's got this little fan right here. So this is called Eco Fan. It's not powered by anything other than heat. So it's just got like this little sensor in here with some conductive like thermal paste that these wires are connected to and that just sends a signal to this little motor and it literally turns heat uh thermal energy into electronic energy and the way that we position this is on top of the wood stove of course it'll be get the base will get hot but the back of this uh, the stack itself is going to get quite warm and it'll just spin and it'll actually blow the hot air away from the stack over towards the sleeping area and uh, just keep the cabin warm. It helps circulate the heat through the cabin. Um, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's put some wood. When in doubt, just incinerate it, right? Here's a little close up of the fan. That way you can kind of see what's going on there. And then, nice little fire kicking. This is cool, it's got a little valve here. You can pull this little knob uh, in and out and then it'll actually open up a vent. That way it gets some airflow. I'm gonna leave it cracked open anyway, that way it really gets burning. And uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking nice. Tiny home life. Check it out. It's spinning, it's doing it. Oh, that's so cool. Powered by heat. Is that not one of the most pleasant sights you can just look at? Man, I cannot wait to build my own tiny home. It's going to be spectacular. Hey there, everyone. I made it back home. I uh, got done hanging out over at Justin's place. Uh, ended up cleaning up uh, the yard and helping him with some things out there for a while. Um, didn't get any of that on film, so it just is what it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And we will go back out probably in the next couple days here. Like I said, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Um, we'll make sure that we go and check on some snares, do some things like that. Um, I'm probably going to end up trying to play some music here and make a, a small video on that. You can find some of my just small videos and stuff on TikTok and uh, my other stuff on Instagram, all at High Desert Heathenry. Um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate the time uh, you take out of your day to watch these videos. And uh, I just appreciate you guys, the viewers. So um, until next time, Skull to you. Take care, have a blessed evening.